Hello, Chaz Marler from Paradise Paradise here, joined by my occasional hostess, V-Bug. Hello. Hello there. Hey, we are going to be opening up a little box of fun games that we got this month. But before we do that, we are going to first talk about a game that we've been playing. You okay there? Yeah. If you haven't yet watched my top 100 games of all time series, this may be a, a bit of a spoiler, so I'm sorry, but we've been playing one of the games at the top of my list, Heroescape. I mentioned in that video that I've been waiting a very long time to introduce her to the game. Maybe I'm a Stegosaurus. So we've played three games of Heroescape together now. I did kind All of all being extremely close. Yes, and you've won two out of three of them. One was a tutorial. One was you had to uh, destroy a little beacon that was on the board, and one was a survival mode where all of these wolves and spiders were coming after your guys. Yeah, one of my dragons was super helpful. We can use the magic of the cinema to just, or we can oh. do that. <laughs> so, like I mentioned in the video, this is a game that has been in my closet for almost 10 years, waiting for the opportunity to introduce it to you. Totally worth the wait. And this is a game that is going to be staying in our collection for years to come. But we're not here to talk about old games in our collection. We're here to talk about new games that are joining our collection and why. So, I'll be right back with a the box that I can't find. So this month's box, uh, here it is. There's three games that we're adding to our board game collection this month. And um, all we gotta do now to get to them is open up the box. Start it for you. No, I got it. We done. Ooh. And then we go like these. Right, let's break open the first game. Oh. This Dang. game is something I can't read. This game is Tyrants of the Underdark. This is a very interesting area control deck building game. I am a monster. Okay. Now, Tyrants of the Underdark is a game that's been getting really good reviews, even though it doesn't really add anything really unique to the board gaming world. It just utilizes a lot of pre-existing mechanisms and mashes them together in a really interesting way. If I had the foresight to film some extra details about Tyrants of the Underdark, I'll cut away to that footage right now. Oh, hey, what do you know? All right, Tyrants of the Underdark by Gale Force 9 gives the players a chance to take their place as a villainous leader of the Drow House. Is it Drow? Drow? Um, dark Elf House to fight for control of the Underdark. So the players are going to combine deck building and area control to build their deck uh, throughout the game, using that to recruit different drow and dragons and cultists and demon minions and assassins and, and use all of those against the enemy troops or to infiltrate and control their opponent's different strongholds that they're going to start taking control of all over the board. Now this game includes a bunch of plastic figures and player boards and one master deck, um, but four other mini decks. And each game you're going to be adding in two of these four decks to help keep some variety in the cards that are available in the pool to work from. So that's kind of nice. And that adds some variation to the game, which hopefully gives it some longer legs, but, but hopefully this thing's going to be supported by some additional expansions that will introduce even more cards into the mix. Speaking of cards and everything in the mix, Tyrants of the Underdark comes with the rule books, uh, little scorecards, uh, four playmats for the players, 220 plastic pieces, 260 different minion cards, and 68 little die cut counters and pieces like that. There's a thingy in here. What is this? Promo sleeve pack from Game Plus. Promo sleeve pack from Game Plus. I didn't even ask for this. They just gave it to me for free. Thank you. <gasps> Next. Next game. I'm going to put a little <clears throat> evil mustache on you to match that accent. This game is a doozy. There's a lot of stuff in this box. And this is a game I have been waiting for all summer. I um, finally uh, was able to get a copy of it here. Defenders of the Last Stand. <laughs> This is a game that has some similarities to Pandemic, but I think even more similarities to Defenders of the Realm. And this is a game that I think is actually going to replace Defenders of the Realm in our collection. Thank you. And through the magic of future editing, 
I'll tell you why. All right, so here is Defenders of the Last Stand, which is a post-apocalyptic adventure game by Richard Lanius and Jason Maxwell. It plays between one to five players, so you can play it solo. It's set in the Western United States about 50 years after a nuclear war. So, whoops, there went the planet. And in this game, players are going to take on the roles of a group called the Rangers, who are defenders of the last known haven for humanity, called the Last Stand. Four outside tribes are going to threaten the security of this Last Stand, so it's going to be up to this group of Rangers to stop them before they march and make their way into the city. All the different players are going to work together against the game to stop these different clans from coming in and destroying humanity's last bastion of safety and security. Well, like I said, Defenders of the Last Stand compares greatly to Defenders of the Realm, which is a fantasy setting versus Defenders of the Last Stand's poke apocalyptic setting. And I usually prefer the fantasy setting, but there's something about Defenders of the Last Stand and the way this game is tied together, I think I'm actually going to really enjoy Defenders of the Last Stand, uh, not in spite of it having a post-apocalyptic theme, but actually because of this post-apocalyptic theme. I think it actually blends really well into this game. And as you're seeing, one thing that this game does not skimp on is components. So let, let's see what we got in the box here. Uh, this comes with 107 sculptures, four double-sided leaderboards, five character boards, 298 different cards of various adventures, monstrosities, mutations, and character cards, a token board, two action reference sheets and 12 different dice, uh, four wooden leader wound markers, and 12 wooden oil and ammo depots, a huge game board, and, and that's not hyperbole. The box actually says specifically one HUGE game board, and HUGE is in all caps, so you know that they mean it. Two different group mission cards, and the grandiose instruction manual. So whether or not my game group and I are going to be able to successfully defend The Last Stand, I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. So that is game number two from the box this month, Defenders of The Last Stand. I can't wait to play it, and it's probably going to kick Defenders of the Realm out of our collection and take its place. All right, number three is a game called Wizards Academy. And this is a Kickstarter that recently uh, started shipping to its backers here in the U.S. I'm going to get back to the shipping in, in just a minute, but first, here's a little overview of what this game's all about. Okay, the first thing about Wizards Academy, boy howdy, this thing is heavy, wow. But, but here's what the game's all about. Wizards Academy is a cooperative game in which you play as students trying to save their academy with the magic that they don't understand how to use yet. So the players are going to have to do different missions each time you play. Uh, for example, you might need to animate stone statues to fight off rampaging hordes one time. You might need to persuade an instructor that the academy is safe. Or you might need to tame a book that's learned how to cast its own spells and just delights in the mayhem that it causes. So each game, all of the objectives and everything are semi-randomized, and you're going to have to discover which combinations of different different glyphs will allow you to fight trolls, imps, demons, fires, and floods, and which combinations of glyphs are going to cause you to accidentally summon trolls, imps, demons, fires, and floods. So it's kind of a, a puzzle aspect to it as well. You may not always have the right tools for the job, but the box does console us with the reminder that when all you have is the capacity to tear open a rift to the water dimension, Every problem looks like a fire. Uh, like I mentioned, this game is heavy. Uh, not necessarily the play mechanisms, but I mean, the box itself was heavy. It's cram-packed full of cards and boards and sculpted figures. I'm really, really looking forward to digging into Wizards Academy and the puzzles that it's going to give us to solve. So there's a little bit of an interesting story about Wizards Academy and its shipping. This order actually was placed in like early June and it's taken about three months for it to actually get shipped and delivered because the publishers of Wizards Academy were shipping out the games to the people who backed their Kickstarters, at least they thought they were, because they started getting these reports that people weren't receiving their games. 
And uh, they weren't receiving their games. They weren't receiving their games. From my understanding, from what I read in their Kickstarter updates, they went down to their shipping department and they found this big pile of stuff that wasn't shipped. And he was telling the people that he was shipping stuff, but he wasn't actually shipping any games to anybody. Even if you don't care, don't be a jerk because your actions will still affect a lot of people out there. Don't be a jerk. Okay, I'm done being selfish. Well, eventually they got their shipping issues figured out, obviously, and they started shipping all of the copies of the game to everyone and all the stores that had ordered it. And finally, better late than never, Wizards Academy has finally arrived. So there's the three games that are joining our collection this month and why. Tyrants of the Underdark, a interesting, if not completely unique, combination of deck builder and area control. Uh, Defenders of the Last Stand, a neat game that's going to probably replace Defenders of the Realm because it does what Defenders does, but adds a few extra layers of ingenuity to the process. And Wizards Academy, the poor little rich game that could, that uh, suffered from a few shipping irregularities, but is now safe and sound added to the shelf. So those are the three games we're adding. Let us know in the comments below what your experience has been with any of these three games and which games in your collection they replaced and why. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, joined by my occasional co-hostess V-Bug, and let us know what you think. And for more board game news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe to both the Dice Tower and the Pair of Dice Paradise YouTube channels. And be sure to join us and follow us on our Facebook and Twitter pages as well to continue the conversation there. And follow me on... You don't have any... On... You don't... Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. This is now my home. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joined once again by my co-hostess, V-Bug. I'm sure and stubby. <laughs> you can grow up the growing... Uh.